My name is Bob Baker. We're here with Paul Bollenbach, and um, we're, this is part of our Jazz Guitar Today's uh, podcast series, and um, we're delighted that we have Paul with us today. So you were telling us about the gig last night, and where was the gig? Oh, it was at Smalls here in oh, New York. Yeah. Yeah, this was a, a great band uh, led by a great trumpet player and singer named Benny Panak III. Benny, I think he was like... Uh, he won a, recently won a vocal competition just for his singing, which is wonderful. But his trumpet playing is great too. Anyway, it was uh, it was a good band, and uh, you know people came out in spite of the weather, so it was it was cool. You know, I'm I'm really glad that you you could take the time to talk to us today. I, I talked to one of your biggest fans earlier today. Uh oh, who's that? That would be Joe D'Onofrio. Oh man, that's my man. Yeah, I love Joe. He's yeah, he, he's a, he's a great guy. For people that don't know. Uh, Joe D'Onofrio has been Pat Martino's manager since 1997, yep. and uh, he's just a great guy. You know, the, in the old days, we would say prince of a guy, you know, but that sounds so corny to say that, but he's a great guy. And um, he's, he's a huge fan of yours. He, he oh, said, so um, cool. uh, obviously, that you guys have just done a record uh, together that he produced um, with Pat Bianchi, I believe, correct? Yes, that uh, is correct. Patrick, and Byron yeah. Landon and Wayne Escoffrey. Ah, I didn't hear Wayne's name, I did, I, but I did hear. Um, uh, so you and, um, and Byron were the uh, other two guys with Joey DeFrancesco for a long, long time. This is correct. Um, Byron actually started before I did with Joey. Um, uh -huh. I joined the band, I want to say it was, it was late 90 late 1990 and i kind of was in it pretty solidly up until around 2001 2002 and then i was kind of in and out of it and i mean i still work with joey sometimes yeah sure yeah he was, he was nice enough to recommend me to do the the last record that frankie valley did which is a <laughs> jazz record so it's like it's like joey me and byron and Frankie Valley singing standards. <laughs> oh man, how cool oh, is good. that? I, it's 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 pretty killing sounding too, uh, if I do say so myself. Uh, you know, well, well, you know, I mean, Frankie's. <laughs> oh, I can't believe my dogs decided to uh, to start. Breaking. Zach, you got to be quiet, brother. It's uh, he, it's he, all it's just real, you know. It's just yeah, real. it's life. <laughs> so, um, you seem to uh, for people that that. Um, we, we did a series, let me back up. We did a series a while back on organ trios. Mm. And uh, I talked to a lot of people that played in organ trios. I talked to Pat, as a matter of fact, of mm -hmm. Pat Bianchi. Um, and, you know, what's going on with the, the guitar and why is why why did that whole thing happen? And so we did a whole series on that. People For people that don't know that the bass is played with the left hand, it's not kicked with the feet, typically. Yep. And the lead solos are played with the right hand, which means there's this big thing in the middle <laughs> that the yep. guitar the guitar just fits in and yeah. so that's that's really why it you know or, or how it how it works but you seem to be the guy oh no <laughs> yeah you are you, yeah everybody you know you seem to be the master of of the organ trio i mean uh, wow. and, and listening to your playing um you know because I've, I've listened to you quite a bit uh, YouTube, and if, for people that don't know, you know, you can you can see a whole lot of you on YouTube with the various various lum luminary artists. Um, you know, you have um, you you. It feels like you were quite influenced by Pat Martino, but you have a more you have a more of a um, uh, you know, Pat gets on a gets on a roll. I want I mean, I'll say this. I'll make sure I, I say this right. And and I yeah, and I hear a lot of. And you're definitely not Pat Martino clone by any stretch of imagination, but you can hear Pat's influence in your playing. Can, can you speak to that at all? Am I nuts or is that about? No, no, I think, I think, uh, well, I th one thing I know for sure is that different settings bring out different influences for me. Uh -huh. um, so there may be some settings where what I hear is referencing some things that Pat has played. And, and for me as a guitar player, it's funny, I, I didn't really hear Pat until I was maybe 22. I was mm -hmm. you know, pretty, I was actually out there working and stuff. And then, then I don't know, somebody played me a recording and I was like, oh, that's that's what I've been going for. <laughs> so, you know, so, you know, I was kind of already headed in that direction. But the, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, that in certain situations that will really come out. And it's really hard not to be influenced uh, by Pat um, and to just 
you know, there's going to be things like that 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 come out in your playing. I I get a kick when when he's in the audience, actually. Oh wow, yeah. Uh, yeah, there, yeah. There was a couple of maybe it was about four year four or five years ago. Um, right. I was playing with Joey DeFrancesco in Philly, and Pat and his wife came out, and we, you know, it, it, Pat was he's a super cool. He's you know very nice guy. I, I've sure. known him for a long time, and he's very supportive. But his wife was funny. He says, Ah, I hear Pet Martino. <laughs> it, was like, it was like, hey, listen, the guy is sitting right there. What yeah, right. I know. What do, you, uh, what do you want from me? Yeah, like, <laughs> You know, that's that's freaking Pat Martino right there. Yeah. You know, it's like 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 you know, it's kind of crazy, but but you got your own thing. You you know, you're not you know, obviously you're not a clone, but you definitely uh, pay tribute. I would let's put it that way. I guess that's yeah. Right. Yeah. you pay tribute to his playing. Yeah. So so grab your guitar. Oh you, yeah, I know that you got it. I got it right here. Yeah, grab your guitar. That looks like a Benedetto. It is. It's a Benedetto. It's a Benedetto Bambino. A Benedetto Bambino. Well, Howard Paul would be very happy that, to see that going on. Yeah, man. It's uh, it's it's kind of been my go-to, man, for yeah. the, the since I got it, which was uh, back in uh, December of this past year. Yeah, it's it's they're they're great guitars. I mean, those guys know how to make it. Well, they know how to make the high end, high end, but they also know how to make the guitar that the working jazz artist, you know, what he needs tonally wise and yeah. all that. And they put it at a price point that makes sense. You know, they're high end instruments, but they put a price. But anyway, so tell us a little bit about your style. And, you know, if someone says, well, what, what do, what do you do differently? Or what, what, what kind of things do you play that 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 is kind of your thing you know that if you got some some phrases or some licks or some ideas or just a, approaches or anything anything yeah. that that sort of go that, that's kind of me yeah i kind of I, I do this and i do that and i'm into this <laughs> I mean, you know, it's 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 really hard to just you know put a. No, you, that, was, that was thing, that was that was wonderful. That's kind of what I've been working on, you know, lately, and so the the thing is, I'm, I'm in in order to stay busy. Well, it's I, actually it's, I I didn't plan it this way, but right. this is what has happened. I, you know, I play a lot of different kinds of improvised music. Right. So some of it could be really open and really free, where somebody said. Uh, you know, you're in a bar and everybody's drinking. And right. So, and so then I'm then I'm like doing like this, you know, like <laughs> you know, like this kind of thing, right? <laughs> yeah. And then and then I'll go and I'll play with with Pat Bianchi, and we're doing, uh, you know, maybe we're doing um, one of my tunes. <laughs> Which is sort of a you know quick three, you know, yeah. I think oh, very yeah. open. and I might have a solo on that tune that'd be something like uh, this, you know. You know that kind of a sound, and then I'll go and I'll play with Mike Ladon, and we're mm -hmm. playing, you know, like. <laughs> Speaking of Pat Martino. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. And then I'll go play with Jeff Watts, and we're playing something that's like... You know, kind of crazy melodies or, you know... So at some point you might hear me do... Oh, that's not the right sound. Hang on. You might hear me fall into something like... Uh, something like this let's see let's see if i can get this in my little space here <laughs> you know those kinds of things but given my druthers I yeah me would stick with something like like this let's see let's see if i can get this <laughs> Thank you. 
something along that's those lines. That's beautiful, man. That's that's really good. You know, it's really um, I, the thing that was was um, the thing that was jumping out at me as it's really obvious that that guitar is in your hands a lot every day. Oh yeah, well, it, <laughs> it, it has to be. I yeah, mean, no, it has know. to be to play like that. Absolutely. It, I mean, first of all, I enjoy it, so it's it's it has value on sure. its own without anything else but also i mean if i showed you the very large stack of music that i have to deal with it's mm -hmm. i mean it's still you know when you're playing other people's original music you want to do a good job right sure you know, absolutely the time to write it and you want to bring your very best to it so that means a certain amount of preparation i mean i got i'll just give you a weird example um there's a guy i mean i work with a lot of people here in new york and they've all got tons of original music some of it is very challenging like uh jeff watts has got some music that is just mentally physically it's not so bad but right. mentally it's just like you have to keep track so that's one thing but like i've got this uh i've been working with this uh this tenor player named stan killian mm -hmm. um, who is who is a wonderful composer really interesting stuff but he's got this tune and the, the intro is uh let's see if i remember this <laughs> So it's it's basically right. kind of hypnotic. It's quick, right? And then once you get into it, it's it opens up, right? So you get all this uh, other kind of uh, stuff happening, and and so I kind of I mean I had to work on the right hand for that just to sure. get it so that I could execute it. Um, and of, of course, I had to figure out well what is the harmony, you know? What because then I, of course once you get past that part, you're improvising. Right. And you're like okay. What is how many how many bars of that pattern would you have to play oh the that's the introduction to a tune and the yeah. intro might go on for five minutes oh wow and you're playing yeah. that that pattern for five minutes no, i won't play it the whole time what i'll do is like this it'll be maybe that might set it up yeah, yeah. <laughs> the band will come right yeah then stan will come in and start playing and then at some point it'll be... that stuff to figure out that stuff so you can play it that takes time on the instrument i mean man oh I yeah mean, during the yeah. pandemic i was sitting down doing this like you know <laughs> you know just trying to figure out you know where do these things go but i mean you know that's that's what you get that's what you do no then, I... there's, then there's all this stuff that you know you got to work on you know all the bebop stuff which is that's a whole nother level right there <laughs> sure how much uh how much time a day do you spend with the guitar not enough <laughs> clearly <laughs> I'm, you know, I mean, six hours, five hours. Oh, no, I wish it could be that much. You know, I kind of run out of steam after a while. Um, uh -huh. And then I, I'm, especially uh, this past, once once we got through January, I've been playing a lot. And uh, and so it, all that requires energy. So, you know, I do what I can. I mean, if I can do a couple hours, <laughs> it's good. Uh, three would be preferable. More is great if I can. Yeah, you know? sure. And I do as much as I can. I try. But you're playing. I mean, you may put in two hours at home and then go to the gig for you know. Yeah, yeah. Play three sets or two sets. Yeah. So like, you're three. you're still you're playing. I mean, you know, you're oh, playing yeah. the whole oh, yeah. the whole yeah. freaking day. Yeah. So, um, what what I notice you're you're hitting pedals down there or or a switcher of some kind. Is that what do, what are you what are you manipulating down there? Is it um, a one I mean, piece yeah. box or is it a? No, no. One thing I've one thing I've found is um, just I like to be able to kind of tailor my sound mm -hmm. minutely. In other words, like to really kind of get inside of it. So I've got a, a what is that? A MXR ten band graphic EQ. Okay. Um, I've also I use this Boss. Uh, what is it? GT. Boss GT1 multi effects pedal. Okay. So that's the source of a lot of sounds that I get. Like, you know, I, I mean, here's a sound I, I use fairly frequently, which actually, I'll mute the mic for a second. Right. It's really coming more from a rock or a pop 
sensibility as far as that goes. You know, you know we're, we were talking to um, one of our guys and and he was saying the one thing, you know, because he plays a big jazz box and he was saying, you know, the one thing the guitar cannot do that a saxophone can do or a trumpet can do is it can't swell. And here I am listening to that box swelling for you. You yeah. know, I'm going, well, that, that kills that idea. You know, it, I mean, it, you can make it work with electronics, especially sure. if, you, if you dabble, which, which I do. I mean, I'd like to actually dabble more myself. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, I just, I like the variety of colors. Right. You can, I mean, here's one, this is a, the other one I use, I use a, uh, boss harmonist mm -hmm. pedal, and I'll use a tube screamer. I just, I just recently put all this stuff. I was carrying around a big, heavy pedal board for a while, and that got to be a drag going through airports. Right. So I downsized to these mini pedals, and then I ran into Pete McCann. We were playing a two guitar thing together, and mm -hmm. he was like, "You should check this Boss pedal out. It weighs like nothing, you know." And, right. And so I basically I just used that, and then of course I started adding to it, and then so I'm back to the pedal board. <laughs> like, like for example, this is something I like this kind of a sound. Oh, yeah. You know, it's very uh, open sounding. It's basically, you know, like fifths harmonized with this uh, real open sound. So, but I mean, you know, I don't use that for everything. Um, I, I, people seem to like it, you know, like the audience seems to enjoy the, the difference in colors, but I mean, yeah. I, I'm happy doing this too. You know, ain't nothing wrong with, you know, this kind of a, well, you know, it's, it's just, it's a matter of having, um, a big palette. You know, yeah, you have yeah. a big, you've got a big palette of colors. Oops, we're losing you. We're, you're, you're cut out your eyes. Now we can't see your eyes. Oh, so yeah. There you go. Much better. <laughs> um, so it's like having a big palette, you know, to, to, you know, you don't want to always paint just red or just blue or just green or whatever. I mean, you know, you, you get a lot of things to, to play with and use judiciously. You come up with cool stuff. And so that's, that's the, it's just a tool, yeah. but I mean, there's a lot, a lot of players that do this that think this way and i i mean i find thinking coloristically or in a painterly manner or even like cinematically is, sure. is something that works for me just in terms of having a input in a in a group you know or even by myself you know i i i, I find that um well we we had a discussion with a bunch of guitar players i'm I'll name drop a little bit between uh, John McLaughlin and Robin Ford and um, Scott Henderson and uh, uh, John Schofield and all that. I've, I've interviewed all those guys nice. and, and they all have pedal boards, you know, yeah. they're all, or, or an effects and, you know, devices. And then, and then there's a whole school of guys like Jimmy Bruno, who sticks his guitar straight into the amp and that's the way he plays and, and everything's valid, you know, every, everything is good. Um, but you know there are the guys that are a little bit more affected by the rock thing i guess and mm -hmm. um you know they grew up and not only did they grow up in that but they also played that music a lot mm -hmm. and um so i heard you using an overdrive you say you're using a um you know um which one with the tube screamer i guess it was you're, you're saying. Um, the one i got the one i used then was uh, actually in the in the boss oh, it's in, it's in the board. Um, so it's kind of like uh based on the rat but i've tweaked it a little bit right to, to make it a little cleaner sounding well, yeah. I think that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, John sure. was John was saying, and I'm trying. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but you're talking about you know the ability of the saxophone and what it can do, and and you know versus what the guitar can do and the dynamics of it. And he had a great quote. He said, "I, I want I want to leave blood on the stage, you yeah. know, and and that it allows him to soar to have that extra you know that extra that extra pump." Well, I think it's really true. I mean, we. You know, of course, it's not to everybody's taste, and I wouldn't use it in every situation. I think that's, you know, the, the, the way I tend to go about this stuff is um, less about what I want to do and more right. about what I think the music requires. You know? oh, I love that. Yeah, it's and yeah. That, that, that for me is the most important thing because, you know, I'm working, yeah, I do some work as a leader, um, and that's always fun because there's a lot of ways you can go with it. But right. uh, a lot of my work is as a sideman playing other people's music. So I got to figure out, okay, what, 
what is going to work in this context uh, yeah what serves the song what serves the you know the thing right, what serves the the music that's that's being right. played that How do, yeah. to be different on any given tune also you know it's just you well there's it there's out. two there's two things that are really cool about that one is it'll keep you working yeah which is good and the other thing is is there's a that's a whole a whole art that a lot of people just don't really understand servicing the music you know they're going to make their they're going to paint with their brush and their stamp and their colors no matter what's going on and then there are people that that are looking at okay let's take a look at this piece of music you know what what can i bring to this music that is additive and supportive you know and that's what you're that's what i'm hearing from you you know and sometimes that's not playing also yeah. which is the, the other thing you know? man it's the best i when you stop playing that's the best i ever heard uh, you sound, you know the, the rest the rest uh, is a piece of music you know there's no there's no doubt about it uh um i sing and play and um oftentimes and with uh you know a three or four piece band and I'm, but oftentimes i'm i'm just holding my guitar i'm not touching it you know there's a piano player and all that kind of stuff and don't you know just sometimes you know less is more but anyway that's not about me it's about you so what's going on with what, what's going on with you if, if i was to say to you um you know what's what's happening you got the new record um the tribute to stevie wonder yeah that's pat bianchi's recording pat, pat bianchi's rec record and it's very fortunate to be you know playing with pat quite a bit and he's a real go-getter and it's yep. uh, you know, it's 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 really interesting to me to play with all these different organ players because each one, I mean, it's the same, basically the same instrument, even if you're talking about a, a keyboard simulation of the organ, it's the right. same sound. Um, and each one has a, requires a, a different approach. And I love playing with Pat because it's, it's traditional and yet adventurous at the same time. You know, it's, it's, it's not, it's not tricky for the sake of being tricky. Right. Some people will write music, you know, not not really organ players, to tell you the truth. Most of the organ players that I work with, and I'll I'll just say the ones, you know, I mean, Joey DeFrancesco, of course. Right. Um, you know, uh, Mike Ladon, Jared Gold, Pat mm -hmm. Miyake, um, Akiko Chiruga. Occasionally I'll work with her. I mean, it's not about being being tricky. It's about just being, you know, real, basically. Right. Music. And, and so the... You know, you don't have this thing with Pat, particularly where it's like, here, let's write this really, really complicated, hard thing that, you know, we're going to have to rehearse. And it's like, here's the tune. This is what I want to do. Let's go over it. Let's play it and develop. Right. It. That's that's I, I like that myself personally. Well, you know, Pat, we, we interviewed Pat. Um, or I interviewed Pat for uh, Pat Martino's 75th birthday uh, mm -hmm. edition, which was a couple of years ago, but two years ago now. Yep. And um, and he is one cool guy. I yeah. mean, he's just a really cool guy. And I mean, he's just plain speaking. And um, you know, I love his playing and his, you know, that is who he is. You know, it's it's kind of meat and potatoes, but not in a way that you're normally used to. If you know what I'm saying, as it's just so it's all everything's got a thing to it. But you definitely know where he says he said that um, I can't remember who he who was who he, who he was talking to. He said if you're not out there and they're not bobbing their heads and stuff like that you're not you're not getting the groove you know yeah, yeah. and getting the groove is what and and i you know i just like i just think he's a really really cool guy and he's obviously a great player uh he can I, like, I like what he's going for myself yeah yeah no i i, like I, I voice that he's finding i mean there's a few organ players like jared is also one like that jared gold where you know yeah. he's got a very individual kind of voice you know well the compliment that the, the compliment that uh joe d'onofrio paid to you yeah. And um, and it it fits with what we're talking about. And he said, uh, so how, "How do you, how did he put? It? I want to make sure. I, I, what I've got in quotes is he's a tasty guitar player. He says he he the, by one thing about Paul Paul Bolenbach is he plays with taste. And you know that's that's a really that's high praise uh, to me. You know to to come from a guy like Joe D'Onofrio who's been working with you know Pat Martino and he's a producer himself. He produced this record and." all that kind of stuff. But um, there's a lot of people, you know, I, I can't go through the names because I'll leave people out. But there's a lot of people that when I, you know, when I, you know, your name comes up a lot with a lot of very, very elite guitar players as one of the guys that, hey, you know, if you talk to Paul, if you talk to Paul, God, you know, he's, he's on my list, I got to get to him. And, um, and, you know, because I said, man, he's, you know, he's, he's top guy, man, he, he's got it down. So in the last couple of weeks, um, you, you know, I, I 
was for about a week now, I've been going on YouTube and, and checking out your playing in more depth because I remember you from back in um, jazz, just jazz guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, you were always, you were featured in that a whole bunch, you know. Yes, People, so that's true. You know, I was very fortunate during that yeah. time, particularly. Yeah, Ed Benson was uh, obviously a big fan. And, and so I would, you know, I would read about you, you know, in that magazine and everything. And so, uh, you know, I've known about you a long, long time, but honestly, you know, I, I didn't, you know, I can't, I don't know everybody. I, I don't even pretend to know all the jazz guitar players out there or what they sound like. There's a lot there. of them. Let me tell you, man, there's some you know, real smokers out there. Oh, there, man. that's a, that's a whole other story. That keeps yeah. me in the practice room also, man. It's like, you go hear some of these young, young, young musicians playing. You're just like, man, I, I got to get to work, man. This guy's going to, he's going to kill me. I got to, I got to, I got to, <laughs> <man>, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, I get, it's funny. It's funny you say that because I get like every day somebody calls me or talks to me and say, Hey man, have you heard this guy, this guy, this guy, he's great. He's great. Yep. I said, man, I got to tell you, they're all great. <laughs> I said, they're, you know, is the defining characteristic is do I feel their soul in the notes out of their instrument. Right, right, right. You know, not can they do this, you know, or this, you can't see what I'm doing. You know, not not can they play a lot of notes or do they know all the scales and can they name to this? I mean, not, that's got nothing to do with it for me because they all can do that. It's, do I, I, do I feel the notes? Something I always tell my students, you know, when they get to a certain point and they're, they're reach kind of a level of, of uh, really strong competency, I say, okay, that's really cool. Now, where are you? Mm -hmm. as i hear i hear you know this that and the other thing but where where are you in this what are you actually trying to say and you know that doesn't necessarily apply to everybody because there might be somebody who is really looking more towards like they want to be a, a, a crafts person right they, they want to be able to you know to read anything and to be able to you know an or symphony orchestra can call them and say hey come in and play this mandolin part right I mean, there, there there are players that do that you know mm -hmm. sure and, and, there are and, 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 and a couple guys here in atlanta yeah yeah i mean it's to, to atlanta's a real strong scene man yeah you know for that but the, the, the point is that you know it's like not everybody sometimes you have your own voice and it's a little too strong it doesn't fit in the, a sort of like so maybe you're doing like a a tv of something for tv right you know and they would say oh can you play it a little differently and you're like thinking to yourself I don't know. I could try. It's not really, it doesn't seem to make sense what you're asking me to do. And at that point, you're done with that because that's not, that's not the gig, man. <laughs> I have not personally had that problem, but I know people that have. And it's uh, like, you know, I'm, I'm finding myself doing something that I swear I would never do. And I'm dropping names and I don't mean to, but I don't know how to illustrate what I want to say. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, we, we, John Harrington's our, on our cover right now. Oh, John is great. Man. He is great, isn't he? He's, he's just, I love that guy. And, and, um, and I met him many, many years ago. Uh, it's a long story. But anyway, I met him a long, long time ago. And I, I heard him backing up a, a guy named Rob Morseberger, Morris Morseberger. Mm -hmm. and, and when I heard him, I had no idea that he was with Steely Dan at the time. And he was. <laughs> I said, this guy is the best accompanying guitar player I've ever heard in my life. I mean, he's yeah. just, I mean, he's just playing all this, this crazy stuff. So I asked him, I said, you know, about the gig for Steely Dan. What, you know, what, how do you approach the music and all that kind of stuff? And, and his answer and your answer really parallel each other. It's, you know, you know, obviously there are some things you got to do. Um, you know, people are used to hearing that thing, but he also, you know, he, 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 you know, he, how do you do it? You know, how do you fit in and not, you know, and not overpower, but make sure you got what it is looking for. And that's what I'm hearing, you know, what you hear, what I'm hearing you say. Um, I mean, that, that by itself is a skill. I mean, John is a real master at that and he's been doing it for a really long time. Oh, you want to talk about a pedal board? You should see his setup, man. Uh, I was working with, with Bianchi and, uh, we were opening for Steely Dan, uh, in 2019. I remember that the entire fall. And, uh, I mean, that was, that was, that was a fun tour. It was, you know, relatively easy to just play a little bit and then hang out. Um, but it was great. To, and I knew John from before, um, right. But but it was great to kind of see him in action night after night doing his thing, which was just so solid. And and even I remember being at a sound check and and the the sound I don't know what the sound folks were doing. They were checking something in the house system. So we got there for our sound check and they were playing just John's guitar part. Oh through wow! The, through the, and it sound I mean just it was like a recording of it. And yeah. It's, unbelievable i mean just the, the live sound is just, i was just like wow man <laughs> i asked john i said so man you um 
you know, I guess you don't like take that pedal board around when you go to play at the bitter end. And he's like, <laughs> no, not unless somebody else is moving. It forward, you know? Well, I mean, you know, just, that is. I mean, you know, you you have played with you know some of the. I mean, Joey De Francesco is is um, you know he's he's a legend. He's still alive and everything. Obviously, he's a young man, but he's he's a legend. Yeah. And um, you know, and he selected you to be his guitar player for a long, long time. And that says a whole freaking bunch. Pat Bianchi is a freaking monster, you know, and, and really a, a, a you know contemporary voice for the Oregon Trio. And, and you guys, I mean, he loves you. I mean, when I talked to Pat about, you know, um, your playing, I mean, he just, you know, he's, he feels like he's died and gone to heaven working with you. So he's, yeah. <laughs> he's really happy. And he was telling me, by the way, about the Steely Dan thing, you know, because he said it was a pretty cool gig. You know, they got it up there. Yeah, so it was a pretty cool gig. Um, so I don't want to I don't want to keep you too long. Um, is there something you'd like to um, let people know? Know something know about you, or is there some message that I, I haven't touched on or um you know receiving a message now no I, I don't know man i mean just uh you know thanks for having me on i appreciate it and oh yeah it's nice to have some acknowledgement from the uh you know from the sort of guitar community at large it's it's always fun um sometimes you're in, in the middle of doing all this stuff and you're just thinking well it's oh yeah next one next one then you're not really thinking about it um so it's nice when that when that well, that, that that's really part of the mission of, of this magazine that's you know, part of the mission of the whole thing and that is to create that atmosphere you know yeah, where people cool. can a place where people can kind of get to know each other a little bit get to know who these guys are and appreciate their playing and and be and be um featured you know and um and it's, it's kind of you know part of the mission so but the beauty of this format is that we can do this again and again and again it and is ag and again you don't have to get to i mean it's so yeah. simple do it this way and that's yeah. one thing the pandemic has kind of you know it's made this extra thing kind of that people maybe was on the side before you right know, the idea of like these kind of interviews or performances or tutorials or anything that you choose to do i'm just looking here man to see if what i if there's anything i want to kind of uh you know promote upcoming i mean this yeah actually there are a couple of nice things yeah go, uh, go for it man so, so i'll just i'll put these i mean there's i've got a a pile of uh you can you can send us that list and we'll we'll, we'll put it up by the way you, you know, know I, maybe i'll do that but the the, the, the things i was going to say is i'm playing if you're on the eastern shore of maryland right september 18th i'm playing with hendrick merkins and paul lang gosh at uh where the heck is that that's uh oh yeah, there's only one place over there fred hughes has this it's a jazz festival right the next right. night i'm playing at the pittsburgh jazz festival with jeff tane watts wow in the afternoon and then on the 25th i'm playing with my own group at tacoma station in dc which would be the first time i played in dc in quite a while now um, i used to cool. live there which was a, a a great experience and i i i love all the musicians that i played with there i learned a lot mm -hmm. playing there but um, I'm back there and I'm bringing Pat Bianchi and I've got a young drummer named Kelton Norris mm -hmm. playing with us. And we're just going to get in there and get down, you know, for, <laughs> so that's the 25th of September. Yeah. Do me a favor and, and, and we're gonna, we'll keep that in, in, in this um, in this format, but send me a little graphic of that. You know, we'll sure. we'll, we'll I'll list send you, it. We'll, send you a, a, a cap, yeah, uh, or a cap. flyer or you know, whatever, and we'll, we'll put it up for sure. You know, if just, uh, you know, just looking at uh, your Wikipedia by mm. the way just, uh, just which needs uh, revision and i can't revise it myself somebody yeah no oh, there's I, somebody out there but you've been on the tonight show you've been on today's show entertainment tonight joan rivers good morning america you played with, well, that, was with that was all with joey i yeah. mean you know i can't actually it's 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 kind of easy you, to forget but i i can't you know stress enough how much a debt of gratitude i owe him because sure. he had all those things and he didn't have to feature me on any of it and he right, featured but me on a lot of it it says a lot about you brother so uh you work with charlie bird how cool is that i did well and, he was living in annapolis i was living in dc uh, and uh, they'd been talking about this young guitar player charlie you should get him i think he hated me because i played <laughs> a lot <laughs> i mean you know we were in there doing like uh we're like, uh, like <laughs> you know, like this, yeah. and and, and I, it comes from my solo, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure he loved that. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and then you play with Herb Ellis. I did. Know? 
I yeah, did. That, that's I, cool. It could have been more. Um, yeah. He had called me to do more, and I had some kind of crazy conflict, and I, I begged the guy to let – it was like a thing that my – it was a contract, and I begged the guy to let me out of it, and he wouldn't do it. So yeah. I missed the opportunity to keep working with Herb, which was great. I learned a lot. You know, Herb liked to hang out. Yeah. So, so he would tell all these stories about different – you know, he'd be like, hey, man, you know how I got the gig with Oscar Peterson? Uh, Herb, why – how'd you get the gig with Oscar <laughs> Peterson, man? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I felt like a straight man in a comedy room. Yeah, right. <laughs> he, he said, well, uh, the other guy knew five licks, but I knew ten licks. So, <laughs> you know, he always looked like a banker to me. Yeah. You know, right. He was always pulled together, had the, you know, the coat, the tie, the whole thing. I always felt Every he... tune started with this. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you see? <laughs> It was pretty funny. <laughs> you know, oh God, that's that's great. Um, you know, he he and Joe Pass and all those guys used to um, used to be at the Nam show. Yep. And uh, they they used to hang out at the Polytone booth. And every Nam show, uh, you know, on the West Coast, they would they would be there in the booth for hours just jamming and stuff. And I got to you know sit you know not sit but you're standing at the Nam show you know like five feet away from those guys and watching them play and you know Carol Kay would be playing the bass and. You know, I mean, it was, it was, it was a, it was a trip to see those guys, but it's so funny to hear you say, yeah, he liked to hang out, you know, cause he did. Yeah, and Joe know. was, I love Joe Pass, man. He was, oh, yeah. I mean, he was, he could be crusty, but mm -hmm. I got to know him a little bit and, and he was super, I actually, I got, here's a, an illustrative story about Joe Pass, if I can okay. share. Yeah, no, please do it. We look at the note here. So I was man, 21 or 22. You know, I was still living in D.C. I was living in a, uh, I was basically living in a closet and eating peanut butter sandwiches, you know. I still do trying that. To do, <laughs> trying to do whatever, you know, whatever I could to try. Sure. And get so Joe was playing at a place called uh, Charlie's Georgetown, which mm -hmm. was under, you know, down by the Potomac River. And it was uh, actually speaking of Charlie Bird, Charlie had an investment in it and he used his name to help promote it. And they had two rooms. They had the main room where the main act would play. And then they had like a the bar area where they had a piano bar set up. And the piano bar over time evolved into this jam session every night. Hmm. So it's like, you know, if you knew the piano player that was playing, you could go play. So I'd, you know, a lot of times if I was off, I'd go and play. Anyway, mm -hmm. I met Joe this way, you know, he heard me play a little bit and I talked to him a little bit and I, I said, man, you know, you think I could get a lesson with you? Yeah, sure, kid. You know, and of course, if you were playing in the piano bar, they'd let you into the show at some point. If it wasn't completely sold out, you could play right. on the wall. So I got a chance to, you know, to, to hear Joe like do his solo guitar thing, which was, of course, unbelievable. Right. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So I show up for the lesson and he tells me, I said, Joe, how much is it going to be? Because I'm, you know, 22 or something and I'm <laughs> living in a closet eating. I'm broke, basically. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so he. So he so he says, well, there's a cigar shop across the street uh, from the hotel. Just stop in there and get me a box of these. And he wrote down the name. Right? I said, okay, yeah, okay, Joe, no problem. You know, I don't know what I was thinking, but I went into the cigar shop, and it was like 250 bucks that I didn't have to my name Holy to God. this box of cigars, right? Holy so God. I showed up for the lesson anyway. It was like 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, he says, uh, he, you know, he... he, he he knew because I had my guitar case. Yeah. I didn't have a gig bag. I had the hard case, you know? Right, yeah. And he didn't see any box of cigars, so he knew when I showed up that I didn't have anything for him. Right. But he was super cool, man. You know, he, he, he kind of he listened to me a little bit. He gave me a few tips, and then I played something that I've been working on. He's like, stop, what's that chord? Well, the chord was uh, this kind of messed up. <laughs> diminished chord, which, you know, he actually couldn't do these kind of stretches, he told right. me. Everything had to be like this. Um so, you know, I showed him, he's like, oh, yeah, I can't do that. I'm like, wow, I could do something Joe Pass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but which, of course, is completely, you know, I was, wasn't was seriously thinking that, you know. But yeah. Yeah, so we hung out for about an hour and a half. You know, he showed me a few things he was working on. We talked a little bit. So come time to wrap up, I put the guitar in the case, and I'm, like, really nervous because here's Joe Pass. I'm in his hotel room, and I, I've got, like, 20 bucks. Man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, uh, oh, uh, Mr. Pass, I'm like shaking. Uh, I'm really sorry. I know you said to get the box of cigars. I had no idea they were going to be so expensive. So uh, I got 20 bucks. Is that going to be okay? <laughs> now, keep in mind, this is like 1982, 
right? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, so, so it wasn't. It was worth a little more than what it's worth now. But I, I so I, so he kind of looked at me, looked me up and down. I think he really saw like how skinny I was, <laughs> and he, he kind of said, "He took the twenty bucks." He's, yeah, kid, don't worry about it. Just don't tell anybody. Uh huh. He was that cool. And then he looked at me again and he said, Are you hungry? I said, Yeah, man, I'm starving. <laughs> he said, You want to get something to eat? I said, Yeah. So he treated me to, to breakfast with his the 20, 20 bucks that I gave him. Yeah. And we stayed in touch. So, like, if he, uh, I was in Europe for a while and he was playing and I, I went to, he was playing with Ella. And right. Peter Betts was a guy that had employed me. Uh, yeah. First, you know, like kind of heavyweight gig playing with Keeter, who played with Ella, bass with Ella for 30 years. You know, he knew Joe and Oscar Peterson and all those those cats. So he uh, he was like, man, I'm going to be playing with, with Joe and Ella. You should fall by. We were playing a big concert somewhere in Paris. So I went and hung out with Joe a little bit. Anyway, he was cool. You know, he was he was really cool. But yeah, he could be crusty. I was playing his guitar in the dressing room and I was playing something he didn't like. He was like, what is that you're playing? I was like, I'm playing with Sonny Gets Blue, but I was playing it fast. Right. Give me that guitar. That's a great story. Well, we're going to have to uh, feature that. I'll, I'll pull that out and make that something all, yeah, all it's the time. Just, no, you know, that, you know, it's really interesting. Uh, you know, I'm getting kind of, I'm getting, now I'm getting a little, little long winded, but I, I had the, the chance to go see um, Grant Green when oh, I was wow. like eight, I was like 18 years old, 19 oh, years old, but he, he played in Buffalo, New York. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was like a scene, you know, I think of the, you know, it was a scene, the, the club he was playing at was, was what you would imagine on the, on the, you know, the black side of town. Mm -hmm. And I'm like the only white person for a million miles. Now this is, this was like 1960 nine you know yeah. something mm -hmm. like that because i was in my my mom's car or our car the family car we only had one car and uh, i drove that down there parked it on the street and i went in and he came in and a you know what would be like a five thousand dollar suit today you know i mean he's looking really good and he had you know, he had a girl on his arm and everything kind of like that and i'm sitting in the front table there's very there's very few people there i remember the place being really clean but like old school you know really old school very open and I'm like, there's nobody even close to the stage except me, you know, this kid. And he looks at me like, what the, are you doing, <laughs> are you doing here? And, uh, but he was cool. And, you know, he played the whole set for, you know, the people that were there. And, uh, and I, you know, was, that was a great thing. And then uh, Barney Kessel used to come to Atlanta. A guy named Steve Nigri had a, had a, a club. It was a, it was a really high end restaurant, but he loved jazz guitar and he brought in Herb, he brought in Barney, he brought in a couple of guys and you'd literally, you know, he, he put those guys, you know, like right in the middle of the room and you're like two feet away from them. So I got to mm -hmm. like talk, talk to them a little bit and all that was, you know, that you just, I don't know, that's, that was, that was cool stuff. And I hope that kind of stuff is still going on today. I hope that. Yeah, it is. I mean, you've got, you know, young players coming out and they're, they're, you know, you, you want to be, you know, I would consider myself to be approachable, you know. By yeah, sure. Really, um, but, you know, not everybody is, you know, but I try and make it that way, especially yeah. for new players, because they might, you know, well, what was that chord you played or whatever? Just, you know, they're there. So they could be anywhere else, really. So, but they're there, you know. And the beauty, there. the beauty of it is, is you remember what it was like to approach Joe. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 So, and, and how you felt, you know, Mr. Pat, you know. That yeah. kind of thing. And these guys are feeling that way about you. You know, they're, they're going, man, I got, I, you know, I got to, I got to Paul and I, oh my God, he's a cool guy. But they all, all the older players say the same thing. They say, you know, we're just been doing it longer. We're a little farther along than right. the players are just because of doing it. So, yeah. you know, it's kind of, it's kind of what it is, you know, I think. It's you know? very cool. Yeah. Well, listen, I'll, we'll wrap this up. I can't thank you enough for coming on today. Uh, thank you so I much. I really appreciate it. And uh, man, I, I'm, I'm, I, I have become a huge fan of your playing. I, I watch the way that you, you, you allow for space. You know, you do the, you do the, I don't want to say the bebop thing, but you, you, you know, you got all those lines, but you also create a lot of space within those lines, which is, which is something that's unusual. I mean, it's, it's unique to you actually. And so I was, uh, you know, I, I noticed that right off because like, you know, a lot of guys, once they get those 16s or, you know, eights going, whatever you want, you know, depending on tempo, you know, get that going. It's a machine, you know, you know, all that kind of thing. And, and you oh, know, I wish I could do that. <laughs> well, I, I think you can, you're being, you're being modest, but you know, but, but I hear, and then you'll be playing 
And then all of a sudden you do a, you know, a three or four note figure and then you'll do it again, but you know, and then you'll move it and then you'll do it again. And then you'll do it again. And then, you, you know, you're creating these, all these motifs and you'll, you'll stop, there'll be some rest. And, you know, you, you got a lot of really, really cool phrasing in your playing that's wrapped up in that genre. And that's, that to me is unique. I noticed that about your playing is that, 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 that ability or, and that, that field, whatever it is that you got going on to, to take all these motifs and throw them in the middle of, you know, straight ahead bebop um, is really freaking cool. And, and, I, and I, I really enjoy that because I love to hear melody. And I know that's got to, that comes from the soul. It comes from your heart. It comes from your head. You know, it's, it's you, you know, to, to get back to something you said earlier. So I, I dig your plan. I'm a fan. I am a fan. Thank you, man. Thanks. And I'm a fan of yours. Thanks oh. for what you're doing. It's oh. fantastic. It's really, really great. Well, we're trying hard. We really are. We want, we, we really want to create community and, um, and, and we want to take, you know, we want to take jazz guitar and make it a little bit more popular than Lithuanian throat singers. You know, we want to, <laughs> Hey man, don't knock those two Vian throat singers, I'm, man. I'm, I'm, them, man. You can hear them do giant steps. I'm, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I mean, we're we're at the bottom of the heap when it comes to uh, you know, jazz guitar is pretty much at the bottom of the heap when it comes to music sold and all that kind of thing. And and, there's, and the only reason for that is is that people don't know enough about it. So we try to take this genre that we love and, and all that and try to make it so that you know, the average person can understand kind of what's going on and, and make it much more accessible to their heads. And that's, that's you know, part of the, part of the mission. That's a beautiful mission. Bob Baker, with Paul Bolenbach, jazz guitar today, man, we appreciate you so much. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. My pleasure. Absolutely. Talk to you later. Talk to you later, buddy. We'll, we'll talk again. Bye-bye. Okay,